Okay, today I'm going to show you how to do a scheduling problem using Solver. Uh, I got this problem out of this book right here. Stevenson Operations, Operations Management by Stevenson, the 14th edition. Uh, it's a very good uh, reference book if you're looking for a good reference book on operations management. It's a very thorough book. So I'm going to move that aside for now. Um, so let's just go ahead and explain the problem. We have, we have forecast of this demand right here for, for the next six months. And we know that we're going to have 150 hours of regular time for the first four months. And we're going to add 10 more hours of regular time for the last two months. And um, one of the things in the problem, I didn't note it, but you should note that we have to work all this time. We're not going to send anybody home early. And we have this overtime available each one of these weeks. So we have 10 hours available. Um, I mean, each one of these months, we have 10 hours available months one and two, and 10 hours available months four through six. Um, we can also do subcontracting. Subcant regular time is $50 an hour. Overtime is going to be $75 an hour. Subcontracting is going to be $80 an hour. And any inventory, and the average inventory that we hold during that month is going to be four dollars per unit. As far as constraints, uh, we can only we have we can't subcontract more than ten hours a month. We're going to start out with zero inventory, and we cannot have any back orders. So, in other words, there's not going to be any back orders because we're not going to have any back order cost. We're not going to have any back order cost because we're not going to allow. So, I don't need to put a cost for back orders up here because we're not going to have any. So anyway, let's, so I put the solution over here to the right. That way we can look at this all in one, one page. So um, the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to go equals this just to bring this over and drag that across. And we'll go ahead and uh, it doesn't need to be bold. So I'm just, so these are my, these, I usually like to do my assumptions in one spot. And then my solution is based on the assumptions. So instead of just copying and pasting it, I'm actually referencing each one of those. Okay. Uh, so the regular time, again, that, that has to be work. So we can also copy that across. In the overtime, we don't know yet. We're going to, this is where we're going to make Excel figure it out. But I'm just going to put five here everywhere. Now this one can't be five because it told us. Is there a camp? We can't work any there, but everything else is just put fives. And we're going to make Excel guess what, what it's supposed to be. We're just going to start something, start with something. Okay. And then the output minus the forecast is going to be, uh, it's going to be, uh, all is basically going to be equal to, well, I could do, yeah, I, was, I, I could do this auto sub here. Can be a sum of those that's the output minus the demand forecast is that right there and i can copy that across you can see 160 minus 160 is zero we can copy this across by the way we're trying to we're trying to minimize we're trying to figure out what we can do to minimize total cost over those six months right so now we have this and we know the beginning inventory we have it over here in the constraints is zero and my ending inventory is going to be equal to uh, it's going to be equal to my beginning order inventory plus uh, the sum of every of, of how many how many units we've made, and then we have to subtract what my demand was for that month. So my ending inventory is zero because we made it. We started out with zero units, right? Then we made 160, and then we sent 160 to our customer. That was our demand. So our average is going to be equal to the average. Our average inventory is going to be the average of the beginning and the end. Okay, and we can copy these across, and we'll just double check them to make sure. Okay, so where did we make mistakes? So this. This is not going to be zero anymore. Now this is going to be, my beginning is going to be what my ending is, right? And my, so, so we can copy that across that way. 
And then, uh, hold on a second, maybe just double check something. One second. And uh, let's just double check these notes. So, so now my ending is going to be, it's going to, I started out with, I started out with zero, right? Because that was my ending here. And then I made, I made uh, five overtime and five sum contracts. So I have 10 extra, right? Because I only need 150. So my ending is 10, so I have five. So, so I have five as an average. So this is my next beginning, right? And then, uh, and we can just keep going like that. Uh, yeah, sorry, I paused the bot video. I just wanted to check to make sure it was correct. It's so so far we're correct. Our backlog. I'm gonna I'm gonna make this uh, not bold. You know, over this way. Remember, our backlog is gonna be. We have to calculate that, right? And my backlog is basically gonna be. Uh, what my ending inventory is. If my inventory is positive, then I'm not going to have a backlog. If it's negative, then I'm going to have a backlog of that much. Because uh, remember, my like for instance, here in, in week four or month four, I started out with five, and I made sixty, right? One hundred and sixty. One hundred and sixty plus five is one hundred and sixty-five. Well, I needed one hundred and eighty. So I'm backlog 15. Now we're not supposed to do that. But anyway, so I'm going to make this, I'm going to figure out the backlog. I'm going to say equals if, uh, if this is uh, greater than or equal to zero, well, if it's greater than or equal to zero, we'll just say the backlog is zero because it's a positive inventory. If it's not, it's going to be a negative, whatever this is, whatever this negative is. Okay, so that just makes sense in a second when I copy it across. Okay, so so since my ending inventory is a negative 15, my backlog is 15. Okay, but so that's just how you would do the backlog. All right, so now we're going to do our costs. By the way, we could do the totals here too. Let's just go ahead and format this across. So this is uh, equal to the sum. Of all of these, right? You can copy that down. Control C, Control V, Control V, Control V, right? Okay, so uh, all right, we don't need these. We don't need these here because that doesn't make sense. Okay, so. So now we can do our cost. So our so our cost for regular time is going to be equal to the cost per unit. And I'm going to F4 that because I don't want that to move when I copy it around. And we worked 150 hours. So I can copy that across. Right. And let's uh, stretch this out a little bit. You know, let's take this to uh, let's take. Let's take this to uh, zero decimal places because it's going to be even. That gives us more room here. Okay. So this is my regular time. And we're going to format this. These are all costs, right? So I'll format all these. And I'll format them. Let's see. Okay. So for overtime is going to be equal to our overtime cost per unit. I'm going to F4 that because I want to copy that across. I don't want this to move as I copy it, right? I'm going to take it times my overtime. All right. And then uh, my subcontract time is going to be equal to how much it is per unit for subcontracting. F4 again times all my subcontract units that I've made. So my cost for holding inventory is going to be equal to the $4. Again, I'm going to have 4 it. And that's going to be times the average inventory. Okay. 
Now this doesn't make sense, it's negative, but uh, we'll just leave it that way because we're not going to have back order, so that negative is not going to be there. And we know the backlog cost is going to be zero because we're not going to have any backlog, so I'll just leave it that way. Uh, we didn't put a backlog cost here, so it's kind of hard to put it in there. All right, and then our total cost is going to be equal to, I'm going to do this little auto sum. Okay, it was a check, we could say uh, equal sum of these. It should be the same, right? So everything comes out good. All right, now, so that's just assuming this is the optimal solution. Now, remember, we want to minimize this. So we could guess, we could say, well, hold, hold on a minute. Now, you just go here with logic, right? You could say, well, Overtime is less than subcontracting time, right? Because overtime is $75 a unit and subcontracting is 80 So it makes sense here. We want 10 and 0, right? And so it's going to save us a little bit of money. So we can go through there and kind of reason it out like that. But sometimes you might miss a solution if you do it that way. So it's, it's kind of fun to have Excel figure it out. So I'm going to go here into data. And I'm going to go to something called solver. Now... If you don't have solver, uh, there you, you can Google how to have solver come up on your Excel. It's already installed. You just have to turn it on. But there's a lot of just Google how to turn on solver in Excel. And it'll tell you how to do that. There's a lot of people that show you how to do that. But anyway, so so once so you might not have the solver here, and if you don't, Google it. You find a YouTube video. That a lot of YouTubes will tell you how to do it. All right. So so we want to set this objective. This is our total cost. We want to minimize it. And we want to change how many units I'm going to work both for, for uh, overtime and subcontract. So I wanted to change all of these and change those and try to get this to a minimum cost. Okay. And then we have some constraints. So I'm going to add some constraints. First of all, we know that we can't have any backlog. Now, I can't use this. I can't say this has to be zero because if I because 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 solver does not like if statements. But so I could say instead of saying this has to be zero, I could say this can't be negative. So I'll say all of these. That's the same thing as a backlog. If, you know, I can't have two negative ending inventories. That's the same thing as a backlog. So in order to say they can't be negative, I don't have to say they have to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay. That's my first constraint. That and this this satisfies that there's no backlog. Now the next thing I have to do, I have to do these little overtime constraints. So I'm going to say uh, all of these have to be less than or equal to these overtimes right here, and it's going to know that that it's going to go piecewise, right? So it's going to say that's less, this has to be less or equal to this. This has to be less or equal to this. This has to be less or equal to this. So that makes that zero and so on. So it'll automatically, instead of doing them one by one, you can do them all by all six of them at once. And the other constraint I'm going to add, let's say we want them to all be even. So I'm going to highlight all of these. And I'm going to say I want all those to be integers. So I add that. And, um, also, another constraint we have here, the subcontracting always have to be less than 10. So I'm going to highlight all of these, and they have to be less than or equal to 10. And let me go OK and just kind of think about this, make sure we got everything. So we have, this is, this is the back order constraint. This is the overtime constraint. This makes it an integer, and this makes sure the subcontracting is less than 10. So we could try that. And, I'm gonna, and this is this here makes sure we can't do negative numbers in here. So you want to make sure you check this. So that makes sure these will not, it won't try any negative numbers, right? And then uh, GRG nonlinear will work pretty good for this probably. So let's just try it and see if I missed a constraint. So I'm going to go solve. I'm going to go OK. And it came up with an answer. So it said, this, this is what I want to work. I want to work 10 hours of overtime here, 10 hours of overtime here. This one, 
I have to work subcontract because remember I can't work any overtime in the third. And then this is telling me to work overtime here and here and then subcontract here. And that minimizes my cost of $720, right? So that would be the solution. So it was actually pretty quick, right? It actually did it pretty easy. So let's check what the book has. The book has uh, 50,800. So the book actually has an incorrect solution. I, I looked at that and they said the subcontract here and in the, in the, in the, and the, and the, and our solution says the subcontract here. So we save, save $80 by using our solution. So in fact, the book had the wrong solution. We actually found a solution the book didn't have. So I'm not sure how they did it. This is just how to do it using solver. So that's pretty cool. We found, found a better, better solution than the book did. Like I say, the book put 10 here. Let me just show you. It was 10 here and zero here. And that's how they got that 50,800 that they had here. But we found a better solution. So, uh, so that's, so that's it. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll put this file up in the, in the description area and you can download it off Dropbox if you want. Um, my picture will come up here. If you like this video, uh, and you want to subscribe, click on my picture and you can subscribe. If you like it, hit the thumbs up. Make comments if you like it. That encourages me to do it more, do do uh, more videos. So hopefully that was helpful to you. That's it for today. Thank you. Thanks for watching.